Hello everyone and welcome to a game that ended very abruptly. It uh, basically took only nine moves uh, for this game uh, to, uh, to be over. Even though it took a, a few moves uh, extra, it was a game over on move nine. And it's incredible how these things uh, continue to happen even though it's uh, 2022 and we are, you know, uh, well in the era of engine preparation and everyone knows everything. Uh, but still something like this happens. So uh, without further ado, let's check it out. It's Yesipenko versus Shakhtar Mamedyarov in round one uh, of this year's air things masters uh, so uh, let's check it out yes Penko with the white pieces opens with e4 uh, we have e5 by Mamedyarov knight to f3 d6 and now d4 so uh, Philidor's defense is on the board and of course not bishop g4 you guys all have all seen the opera house game uh, but rather e captures on d4 knight captures and now knight to f6 we have knight to c3 and g6 now so this has all been played before nothing new here black is preparing to fianchetto to the bishop castle king side bishop to g5 nicely developing the bishop and the bishop to g7 queen d2 now Yesipenko saying that he is ready to castle queen side and now h6 and this is where the fun uh, really happens Happens because the position is an own one uh, and uh, usually white will retreat the bishop to f4 or to e3 and it makes sense you force the black to make a, a weakening in the position and you always have this uh uh, attack on the on the h6 pawn for example bishop e3 uh, it's a little bit difficult for black to castle because the h6 pawn would be hanging because now it's a target however here uh, Ispenko did not retreat the bishop to f4 or e3 he played bishop to h4 and I think this is uh, uh, primarily what uh, the problem is for Mamedyarov in this game he got confused so here uh, we have uh, castles uh, and now we have queenside castle so now you can see black can castle uh, but he thought that everything was just perfectly fine just normal and he continued developing his pieces he played knight to c6 but now uh, it's only move nine but the game is completely over for Mamed Yarov uh, and of course you guys um, uh, can see why so feel free to pause the video here and win the game for Yespenko while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on realizing that, uh, yes, uh, the queen on d d8 is only defended by the rook and the knight. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's knight captures on c6. Here, Mamidyarov captured. It's pretty much the only move you have. And now comes e5, and there is nothing for black to play here. Uh, you can't move the knight, otherwise you lose the queen. Uh, you can't move this pawn. Uh, if you capture here, then just captures, captures, and captures with check. You win a lot of material. Even though, okay, a ca uh, knight to e4 is very interesting because you also attack... Um, uh, white queen and the bishop on h4 the problem is the resulting endgame is winning for black as well if bishop captures on d8 knight captures on d2 bishop captures c7 knight captures on f1 e captures on d6 creating a monster past pawn uh, and now of course the knight uh, has no uh, escape squares you have to play something let's say knight captures rook captures and you get this position where um uh, white is up uh, only one pawn, but it's uh, just a beautiful pass to D pawn. And this is completely winning for white. So instead, after E5, Mamidyarov tried G5. He said, all right, I will sacrifice the knight and I will try to use this diagonal and the semi-open B file to my advantage. Uh, maybe I can win this. It is a rapid game, so uh, anything can ha still happen. So okay, Yesipenko accepted the, the, the free knight. We have queen captures on F6 and now bishop to G3. So now uh, black completely down the rook. Uh, down a piece uh, and um, uh, Peter Leko said in the live commentary that uh, when he saw the position that he just didn't know after rook to b8 if this is something that Mamidyarov did willingly as he is a pretty wild player or, or did he just blunder a piece later on it was established that it was a piece blunder but of course Mamidyarov will still fight uh, bishop to c4 uh, we have bishop to e6 now we have bishop back to b3 not really worried about anything if you capture we're going to capture with the a pawn and then the rook will be well somewhat useless here here. So here c5 preparing c4. Mamedyarov has to try something. Now comes f4. Now of course white also wants to break through here. We have c4 and f captures on g5. Attacking the queen here. Uh, and now queen to f5. Mamedyarov doesn't want to waste time recapturing. He plays queen to f5 as he knows the bishop can only come to a4 and he wants to play queen to a5. And then maybe some bishop captures on c3 or rook captures on b2 ideas uh, might be possible. 
So G captures on H6 by Yasipenko. Now comes Bishop to H8. You don't have anything else. Capturing here doesn't do anything. We can show it if you guys enjoy it. Uh, I, I know you guys like it when I show lines. And uh, now, for example, Rook F to C8. We're going to play A captures on B3. And nothing good is happening here for Black. Uh, so instead, Bishop back to H8. Now comes Rook H to F1. Now preparing to bring the Rook into the game via the F4 square, Rook F4, Rook to H4, and so on. So Queen A5 preparing the idea. Now the idea is that if Bishop to A4, as the Bishop is still hanging, then we can play Rook captures on B2, maybe. Uh, but still, even though it looks very ugly for White, White is completely fine here. And we're also going to show why, because after King captures, yes, you can capture here because the Knight is pinned, but now just A3, and there's nothing nothing black can do here and look at this rook to b8 check king a2 and even though all of black's pieces are attacking that white king even the bishop uh, this bishop and this bishop slicing all the way here uh there is no good move here for black uh, there is no way for you to make any uh, progress here so it's a very very sad uh, day for Mamedyarov or rather a start of the day so here uh, instead of uh, going for the defensive bishop a4 we have h7 check and now you either go in front of the bishop uh, but that's not uh, that's not a lot of fun then we can capture on c4 bishop captures queen d4 check picking up the light square bishop or you can capture but this isn't much better now comes rook to f4 as the h file opened up for the uh, rook to use uh, to attack so here c captures on b3 nothing better for Mamedyarov Rook to h4 check, king to g8, and now queen to h6. And it was in this position on move 23 that Shahrir Mamedyarov resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, whatever you do, uh, either queen to f7, h7 is checkmate or queen to h8 is checkmate. You cannot defend against both of them. And of course, Mamedyarov resigned. So really, really incredible stuff. And I think this is uh, exactly what happened here that after uh, Mamedyarov challenged the bishop with h6, uh, these are known moves and this is an unknown move. And I think this maybe confused Mamedyarov a little bit as then knight to c6 is just a terrible, terrible blunder. Uh, so yeah, that's just the, the reality of modern chess. People uh, study too many lines and then you no longer even look at the position. You just, you know, think you know the line, but the, the reality is you actually don't. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, it was uh, quite a quite a, a tough start for Mamed Yarov. Uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Odalt, uh, Lucifer45, non-commercial EP, uh, Dale Cook, uh, Anwar, the 95% American flag Numa, and David Kimura for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of this spectacular event uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.